have you um made like a separate like pity round for Nadir because eventually <laughs> with these quizzes, right? I've done a lot of these quizzes for Nadir and I found that he will start to throw his toys out the pram. What was one of your think, questions for me? What level is so, blue eyes? <laughs> no, no, no. The question of the, the question was what is the level of arm dragon level seven? Quick rule over of you, we got five different sections here. Uh each one's gonna be a different lore. There's gonna be five questions each. First and second questions are going to be worth one point. Third and fourth are going to be worth two points. Fifth one's going to be worth three because that's going to see how much the lore has enriched you in real life. It's going to be some kind of, you know, real world trivia question related to it. Uh, you can buzz. You got 10 seconds, uh, but you're not going to be penalized for buzzing in. So go ahead and part one, dual terminal. The ally of justice monsters catch a lot of flack from the player base, but in the early chapters of the lore, they're actually the MVPs. Which interplanetary threat were the Ally of Justice built to fight against? I'm seeing Jordan. Worms? That is correct. Oh, I don't Worms. know lore, by the way. I don't know the lore. <laughs> I'm, I'm really bad at the <laughs> lore. <laughs> don't you know lore? But I know what was in the pack, and I know they're anti-light dark. They're anti -light monsters. Good enough. <laughs> it was in the Master Duel story. It was right there. Yeah, you do that for content. Surely you've read it. I just skipped past it. You I think I read the again. lore? I just click buttons until the gate is finished. <laughs> Gishi Noelia is the cause of a lot of problems during the second Duel Terminal Age. She learned how to create fish people, used her own kids as vessels for the souls of great elder beings to turn them into living weapons, and she even unsealed the steel swarm from their ancient prison. But thanks to a recent structure deck, we now know about her time before becoming a Gishki. Which archetype did Noelia belong to before she was a Gishki? I uh, got Vlad. Uh, ice Barrier? That is correct. Ice Barrier. So a major theme in the dual terminal story is the connection and conflict between siblings. Gishki, Amelia, and Avance, Gem Knights Lapis and Lazuli, even the warring goddesses of the realm, Sophia and Tierra. But one pair is conspicuously missing. She's the sister of Winda, Priestess of Gusto, and left the world of dual terminal before the story even started. Who is this missing sister? Hey, that's Vlad again. Uh, Pilika? Uh, that is not correct. Um, I got Jordan up next. Who's, uh, what you got? Win? Uh, do you have any more to add to that? Da? No, the, you said sister of Winda, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Winda. yeah, Winda's sister, so who's Winda's sister? It's like when like, the Charmer win. That is good enough. Win the Wind Charmer is Dang. Winda's sister. Uh, very deep uh, cut from the uh, Master Guide books. Uh, but yeah, they have the same staff. Uh, there's uh, like a little plushie that they share. It's very funny. Je uh, no. One of the most fun things about digging into the Yu-Gi-Oh lore is finding all the interesting connections between the cards. And the most frustrating part is finding those connections and them having no explanation whatsoever. For instance, did you know that there's a direct connection between the World of Dual Terminal and the Draco Slayers? Uh, what is the monster that confirms these worlds connections? Uh, Vlad. Monster. Uh, Metaltron 12? Uh, it's close. Uh, I'll give like you one Zephyr Metaltron, like, both the same thing. That is Zephyr correct. Zephyr Metaltron, uh, released oh. in the big, uh, dual link pack. To this day, we have no idea how they're actually connected, though. They just name dropped it. Last one for dual terminal. Gem Knights were, uh, an interesting choice of fusion representative for early dual terminal because, uh, there's an interesting connection with how fusion works. Under certain circumstances, Chemical compounds that make up crystals and rocks can cause their molecules to fuse, fuse together, creating entirely new substances. And Yukio has been referencing that since the very beginning. What is that chemical process? Uh, Jordan? That's polymerization. That is correct. Polymerization wow. uh, is the chemical <laughs> reaction that takes- That's literally my degree actually helping for once in my life. Motherfucker with the fucking neuroscience degree out here. What the fuck? That's fucking just not doctor. fair. I don't have a neuroscience degree. Part two, world legacy. All right. Oh, before before we before we press on, I have to ask, did, have you um, made like a separate like pity round for Nadir? Because eventually <laughs> with these quizzes, right? I've done a lot of these quizzes for Nadir and I found that he will start to throw his toys out the pram. What was one of your think... questions for me? What level is so, blue eyes? <laughs> no, no, no. The question of the, the question was, what is the level of arm dragon level seven? <laughs> because he just kept getting pissy about like being shit at Yu-Gi-Oh trivia. I had to give him like ten points for free, and he still came like fucking second from last. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I didn't come prepared for that, but I, I wouldn't patronize him like that. That that would be silly.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, your, your famous last words. Wait till the end of the quiz. All right, first question for World Legacy. Beloved by Magic Key pilots and hated by me specifically, this card's flavor text was transformed from a beautiful poem about the fate of the planet into one of the community's most endearing memes. Uh, Bread. Check this out. Um, oh, you the card it is thing? indeed check this out. It is a flavor text. I you had didn't ask the question. I was waiting. Like, is, are you asking for the flavor text or the monster name? They uh, they they um, either are. buzz beforehand. Okay, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I was, like, waiting for a question. Like, <laughs> uh, the world legacy story culminates in the creation of a Vita Rebuilder of Worlds. Uh, but it also has a secret connection that confirms it to World Legacy and Dual Terminal. Uh, which archetypes monsters contained in Avita's armor prove this connection? Hey, that's Vlad. Burnoid? Uh, close, but that is not it. Uh, next up, I'm seeing Farfa. Clifford? It is Clifford. Let's you go. can see some <laughs> scout little things over here. Now, there is technically, like, the flames behind Avita do kind of look like the Infernoid flames, but there hasn't actually been a more substantial oh, connection. Shit. So, uh, question three. This is a two pointer. Uh, the art of World Legacy's memory is a scene from the distant past, showing the construction of Mech Knight of the Morning Star, with each scientist being an ancestor or ancestor of the different Crusadia tribes. Wait, really? Except for one of them. Who is the non-Crusadia monster hiding out in this card? I'm seeing Farfa. Galatea's, uh, Lee's, sorry, Lee's ancestor? No, not Lee. Um, the girl, the girl's ancestor. Um, here, let's, let's roll on the back. What's the final answer? I don't know her name, the girl. Uh, chosen by the world chalice. Uh, with, with, with like the sword key kind of deal? The the, the female is the non-Crusadia. Okay, uh, unfortunately that is not it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jordan. Uh, it is Lee. It is Lee, the world chalice fairy. Um, I, I literally sat in. I literally sat in. Throw it away. <laughs> Do you, do you think that's do you think that's Ib? Do you think that's the girl? It's so female. Come on. <laughs> yeah, as we all know, all girls are the same. <laughs> all right. Uh, question four. Uh, during the battle against the Orcus, Longirsu drops the World Legacy World Wand from orbit, causing a lot of damage to the planet. Imduk, the best dragon puppy, summons up all their strength to make a shield to save everyone, but he does not survive the ordeal. Thankfully, in true Yu-Gi-Oh! lore fashion, he is revived by one of the world legacies. Which world legacy revived Imda? Uh, Jordan? Uh, I'm just gonna say world, uh, world legacy guard dragon? That's the name of the card, but I don't know anything else. Just guess. Uh, that is the name of the card, uh, but it's not the name of, like, the big machine thing. Alright, uh, I'm seeing bread. I forgot what it's called now. It's the green box thing. Um, fuck. I'll pass on that one. I, I, it's the green box. I know it's the uh, fucking the green, green box. box. Okay, uh, I will. I will give you green box. I'll give you the points for this, unless <laughs> someone else can snipe the real name. And I see Farfa next up. What's the answer? Oh, I uh, world legacy um, Lance. Uh, world legacy Lance. That is not the correct one. I tried. Which means Vlad. <laughs> which what's world, the world legacy, legacy world arc? It is world legacy world arc. Oh, oh shit! My. <laughs> green box. Uh. Green box. Box. Green box. Crawlers are one of the more unsettling creatures in the World Legacy storyline, but they might teach you a little bit about biology. Each member is named for a particular part of which organ system in the human body? Uh, Jordan. Uh, the brain. <laughs> um, no. That's a part of that system. Wrong. wrong. Me. Oh, oh. Me. me. No, 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 no. You got it wrong. No, next person. Me. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> It's, your, it's like your nerve. Your nerve. No, 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 no it's me. It's me. <laughs> well, Farfa, what's your answer? Central nervous system. What do we? What do we do here, Chat? What do we do here? Do we give? Do we give Farfa the, the points? Do we get him on the board a bit more? That's me. Like that's that's literally me. <laughs> He's doing it. He's Jordan doing got it. the wrong answer. Like, what do you, do you know? Mean? Do, you, do you know what an axon or a dendrite is? Like, yeah. No, I don't know what it is, but I know it's part of the ner central nervous system. Hmm. Um, Listen. Let's. Well, okay, Jordan. Let me know to worry about this exact situation. So to thank him for all of this, we're gonna give Far for the freebie. He'll get two points. Whoa. Oh, three points. So there you oh. go. Hey Jordan, it's more <laughs> embarrassing that you didn't know the answer as someone with a neuroscience degree. Just saying. I, I did know the answer. <laughs> Why'd you give the wrong answer, bro? You said brain. That's not the answer. Go to part three. Albaz oh, or CBA. Oh come on, you've watched all my videos about it. You know all this, right? No, I haven't. I've only watched your dual terminal ones, which is embarrassing because I didn't get any. <laughs> 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 
All right, well, we'll just try to skip uh, right over that so we don't have to acknowledge it. One of the main inspirations for the Abyss storyline is an incomplete work by William Blake, the Four Zoa. Many names of characters are derived from this work, but to really get the point across, the symbols show up on two cards, one being a spell, the other being a fusion monster. Name at least one of these two cards. That's Vlad. Branded in white. That is correct. Branded in white Brand shows the four interconnected circles. Uh, the other one is Alba Lanatus, the Abyss Dragon. Alrighty, uh, question two for Abyss. Uh, Sword Soul may be known as a worm focused deck, but it actually has a secondary type, Spellcaster. Incredible Ecclesia can summon any Sword Soul out of the deck, and the Iris Sword Soul will be familiar to anyone who has experience with Rotation Yu Gi Oh's Lesbian Turbo. <laughs> but one you may not be as familiar with is the Golden Sword Soul, made up of two defected members of Dogmatica. Can you name this dynamic duo? I'm seeing Vlad. Uh, Theo and Aiden? That is Dogmatica Theo and Dogmatica Aiden. Jeez. Uh, the two goodest boys in the entire Damn. lore. I've heard of Dogmatica Theo. I don't think I've ever heard of Aiden. Yeah, I remember Theo. <laughs> I forgot their fucking names. I knew it was like the fist or some shit like that. I only know Theo because it was the best beat stick in uh, Revs' series for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden is my favorite Mystic Tomato. Alrighty. Uh, next up, question number three. Uh, speaking of Sword Soul, did you know that that big orange dog thing, Sword Soul Auspice Chun Jun, can tell if a person is good or evil? But if that's the case, how did Long Yuan get away with sticking around the summit for so long? Well, it turns out he split his sword into two and gave the evil half to another Sword Soul. But which one did he give it to? Uh, that's Vlad. Uh, Mo Ye? That's correct. Sword Soul of Mo Ye. Wait, uh, my girl's evil? She is given an evil sword to cloak Long Yuan. And then for some reason, it's never brought up that she has an evil sword. I have no clue what's going on here. But she's good, right? But she's okay. Okay, good, good, good. Question four. Uh, after a long journey into the Great Sand Sea of Golgonda, Albaz and Ecclesia cross paths with Fleur de Lis, who tells them to go to the Sword Soul Sacred Summit. Um, But why did she tell them to go there? Bread, what's the answer? I'm just going to have it a guess. I'm guessing it's because the Dogmatica can't see at the top of the summit. Uh, that is a thing that is true in the lore, but that is not the answer to this question. Uh, Vlad. Oh. Is it to heal the stigmata or something? Uh, I think that's close enough. Uh, she tells them to go there to seal their brands. Um, yeah. around the time they run into each other, uh, Maximus has unsealed them. Fleur de Lis and her crew of Aiden and Theo have already gotten there sealed by the sword, so they're all like, hey, you two should probably go there before you turn into weird theater kids. Alrighty, uh, last one for the Abyss lore uh many events in the abyss storyline are not only based on the four zoa but also uh the book of revelations from the new testament one passage describes a wider a rider on a white horse and as it turns out the most controversial tri-brigade link monster bucephalus is named for a historical horse with a white star on its head uh, ridden by one of the great conquerors of early history uh can you name this conqueror, uh, Jordan. Alexander the Great. That is Alexander the Great riding Bucephalus into battle. Did where where were you, Mr. History teacher? Where were you? That's fucking ancient history. <laughs> I do modern history, okay? Come on. <laughs> Any Nazi references in Yu-Gi-Oh! lore? I doubt it. There's a wonderful group of monsters called the Summon Reactors and Spell Reactors, and those are uh, based on some interesting machines. Visus lore. Ah. Visa Star Frost. Look and the cool. Scare Claws premiered in the set Dimension Force, kicking off the Visa Saga, but there's technically another card in this lore printed before even them. While its art might have given it away... Oh, Vlad. Clear New World? That is correct. It is Clear <laughs> New World. I was literally about to fucking push the button. <laughs> Uh, you might have heard that the different worlds and archetypes of the Visus lore represent different emotions, and they're very good at replicating how it feels to fight against that particular deck when you're actually playing against them in paper. For instance, I get scared when thinking about how to deal with Triheart, sad when my opponent mills three tier names, and blank when my opponent locks out all of my zones. Uh, that is flat again. Anger. It is Angi. That is the emotion that the Keshtira represents. This is like Hindu uh, theology, basically, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot gets lost in translation, which is pretty frustrating for lore heads. For instance, did you know that each of the world's visas visits are numbered? In the OCG, Reichphobia is named the fourth broken world, while Wraithsoth is the sixth. Which number is Pelorena? Um completely guessing seven uh that is not correct um vlad we got you up next fifth fifth is not the right one uh bread i'll just say three three that is not correct barfa you want to try to snipe this one two <laughs> two 
Uh, all of you are not correct. Is it, it is 12? the first oh, broken okay. world. Oh, it's right. prime as in one. Very, very funny that they introduced the second, and they're all like, nah, we'll just put this in the second. We're just going to throw everyone for a loop. All right. Uh, many cards in the Visus lore look for monsters with 1,500 attack and 2,100 defense, a stat line that's shared among all the level 4 heart monsters found throughout the story. Did you know that there are two secret heart monsters that the lore never references? Name at least one of these two non-heart monsters found in Yu-Gi-Oh that have 1,500 attack and defense. Of uh, Vlad. Infinitrack Drag Shovel. Infinitrack Drag Shuffle and oh my Wind God. Up Zen uh, Mane. Zen, Zen Mane is part monster. of the lore? That's crazy. Uh, that is a Man. huge joke. Um, I, but I they can't are the believe only other that Zen Mane is technically part of the Kashtira deck. That makes so much sense. Wow. Yeah, it makes <laughs> yeah it's fire attribute like uh, like Rhyzar. Or Rhyzar. <laughs> He's piloting the mech. All right. And our last Visus related question. Each of the Visus worlds represent a different emotion, but they also represent different reincarnations reincarnations of the god Vishnu from Hindu mythology, and you can tell which reincarnation is being referenced by the number of the world the story is taking place in. Raid Soth is the sixth broken world, representing Parasha Rama, who made it their mission to destroy an evil cast of warriors who are represented by the Kashtira. But what is the real world name of that cast? It sounds very similar to the first fan-translated name that Kashtira had. Uh, what you got, Farfa? Kshatrila? Um, that's close. I'll give it to you if no one else can get the a closer answer. Uh, Jordan, you buzzed in. Do you want to get a crack at it? I was going to say um, Shangri-La. Uh, it's, it's the only fan translation I can remember. Yeah, Shangri-La is a, uh, a mythical location, uh, but the name that was given to Kashira was Kshatri-La from Yugi Organization. The real world name for it is the Kshatriya. That was close enough, right? It was close. Like I said, like I said, no one else got it closer. So okay, okay, okay. One constant nice. it off. We got it. Let's bring it home, folks. We've got miscellaneous lore. Ooh. Oh no! Uh, Yay! This is gonna be from all throughout the entire card pool of Yu-Gi-Oh. Which one's gonna be from a different? If lore there isn't a Gaga Gigo question, I'm gonna be really mad. Oh, Reuniting God. with oh, your lost God. wife can be pretty hard, but with a little help and a lot of determination, not even hell can get in the way. What seminal work of Italian epic poetry is the Burning Abyss archetype based on? Farfa. Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Dante's Inferno. Oh. You all knew that. Come on. Yeah, we buzzed. Is that called the Divine Comedy? Oh, I'm just that, that fast, I guess. Uh, while being released in different kinds of sets, these two archetypes would eventually be revealed as taking place in the same world. One is a group of shape-shifting yokai. The other are the Order of Warriors who hunt them down with magical burning weapons. And while together, have become another favorite of the WLW community. Name these two archetypes. Uh, Jordan. Mayakashi and Shirinui. That is correct. Mayakashi and Shira Bred Nui. Their teamwork may seem unbeatable, but the six samurai are actually riddled with internal conflict. For instance, Shinai dies in service to Shien, but his wife Mizuho thinks foul play is involved and wants revenge. But she's not the only one. Wearing the same necklace as both Shinai and Mizuho, which monster faces off against the Great Shogun where both combatants are evenly matched? That's Farfa. Tenkabito Shien? Uh, no, it is not Tenkabito Shien. Uh, Jordan. Uh, I'm just gonna go, uh, Grandmaster. Uh, it is also not Grandmaster of the Six Samurai. Bread, you're on third. Is it Shadow of the Six Samurai? It is Shadow of the Six Samurai. The Six mm. Samurai exceeds got monster. One. Let's go. <laughs> I did it! I did it, Mom! I did it! I did it! The most dangerous thing about sleeper agents is that they can be hiding in plain sight. So let's see how well you can spot them. Including their latest card in the Dueling Heroes Megaton, how many cards does Spiral Sleeper show up in, regardless of their age? That's bread. It's four. Uh, four. It is does not show up on four cards. Jordan. Uh, I'll go three. Bonus points. Three. Get that's them all. also not it. Vlad. Uh, what's the number? Uh, two. Two. No, does not show up on two. Farfa, your last one. Five. <laughs> Spiral Sleeper shows up on five <laughs> different <laughs> cards. Double Wait, Helix double itself. Double Helix. Fully so, armed, brilliant. rescue brilliant. mission, and the oh. newly released double agent. I, I, didn't, I forgot about fully armed. Is it in the yeah. artwork of fully armed? Yeah, yeah he's the the, uh, the ghost in the background because he's wearing his gauntlets as like a little memory thing. Ah. Uh, hey, okay. you just gave Brad uh, the point. What are you doing? I forgot to give him two points because he got a third question, but here's two points for you. Okay, okay, okay. Question five. This is the three pointer out of this category. The kaiju theme is a massive love letter to Godzilla and the monsters that surround it, but did you know that there's a black sheep in the bunch? Radiant, the multi dimensional kaiju, shares a lot of characteristics with bolt hands and other signature creatures from another famous Japanese show featuring giant monsters monsters. 
what is that franchise? Jordan? Uh, pass. Four, I don't know. I don't three. know why, but I don't know. Yeah. All right, Vlad. Common Rider? Oh, it is not Common Rider. Very close. Do we have anyone else that wants to buzz in and try to steal it? Pokemon. Oh man, you know what? I I I, I was worried no one was going to get it, but actually, I'm still worried about it. That is incorrect. <laughs> uh, Bread, do you have uh, one last guess? I don't. I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, Radian. Uh, while the name might be a reference to Rodan, the big pterodactyl monster in Godzilla, uh, a lot of its other references come from Ultraman. <laughs> I don't even uh, know that. Radeon looks like Dark Lugiel, one of the I mean, I said Pokemon, like, that's close. Uh, all right, folks. Well, I had fun. Vlad, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, glad to crown you as the champion of this one. Oh, no. The Ojamas are here. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, oh, son of a... Oh, fuck off. No. <laughs> I have this whole other... Th folks, I'm sorry. I got to keep you for another five questions about how the Ojamas connect several different lores in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. I'm going to describe the card. It's gonna be a combination of the archetype itself and the art of the card. I'm gonna need you to tell me what card features those Ojamas, all right? These winged wonders may be a bit hysteric. Okay, all right, Vlad. <laughs> it's hard to It's hard to <laughs> <laughs> I had to put something in the one point. Everyone knew it. It was a good starter. Let's try this next one. Maybe maybe we'll get through the question this time. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Get your season passes ready because it's time to ride the most thrilling attractions across the... Vlad, I swear to God, if you get this wrong. Amazement. Amazement what? I need the whole card name. Oh, what the fucking card name? Of course. Uh, Amazement Attraction Wonder Wheel? Okay, I guess I'm not mad. Amazement Attraction Wonder Wheel. That is the one. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? Almost <laughs> choked there. Oh my god. I was gonna cry. <laughs> These bright little creatures just got a fresh coat of paint in Age of Overlord and are almost as annoying as the Ojamas. By attacking directly, they cause a number of debilitating effects. And if you've never seen the OCG art for this card, the answer to this question might come to you as quite a shock. That's Jordan. Uh, I think it's War Cancel. That is correct. It is Watt Cancel. The yeah, TCG uh, art is just a big red X murdered, yeah. through it. Yeah. And it's it sucks because Ojama Yellow is getting the fate he rightfully deserves here, and we should all see that. Okay, uh, but yeah. why does he have eye sockets in his skull when he doesn't have eyes there? Someone must have just, like, long ago just pulled them out, and now there's just, like, a big old, like, Ah, oh, my eyes are hanging out everywhere. Whoa, whoa. I can't go to an optometrist now. Ojamas can show up in even the most serious of lore, ruining the mood six ways to Sunday. For instance, this powerful warlord and his band of loyal retainers were caught off guard by these intrusive pests in this rockfall downfall. We're going to go five. Oh, gonna guess. Is it painful escape? It is not painful escape. Painful escape, my uh, favorite warlord. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, I know, I know, but I just have, it's the art. I've got the art in my head. Oh, fuck it. Jordan, I've got you on second. Nitwit Outwit? The answer is Nitwit Outwit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see yeah. that Shien and a number of the, uh, not the legendary, but the original six samurai, uh, have been caught off guard by all of the Ojamas. Now they're just throwing rocks at them. This is the last one. This is the determining factor, folks. This quiz has been a blast, but now it's time to blow off some steam. And I know just the trick. Starring as the performance of this high-profile burn strategy, Ojama Yellow and the gang can be found cheering on these Vrains era idols in this card. Vlad. It's one of two. I'm just going to guess Trickstar Light Stage. It is not Trickstar Light no! Stage. Uh, Bread. Trickstar Live Stage. It is Trickstar Live Stage. Yeah. Uh, right Where? in the middle. Holy oh, shit. Yellow the eyes, left. Yeah. Ojama Yellow is right there what with the, the ice fuck? box. Ojama Black is just to the left, and Ojama Green is in those little uh, two arms that are right next That's to him. That's insane. Kind of there. What you're saying is that points. the Trickstars and the Six Samurais are in the same universe? That is literally true, because otherwise we would have to contend with the fact that Ojamas are an infection across multiple universes independent of each other, and I refuse to believe that there are more Ojamas and there are necessary. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for joining here. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Thank you for sitting this. Was, this was amazing. Honest, thank you so much for that putting this great. together. This You put so much into this. Yeah. Thank you, dude. I really appreciate it.